watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Yay! Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. On tonight's show, I'm on location, and I'm going to be learning how to make gifts from the spice cupboard. My host this evening is Ann Wintz. She's the owner of a Blumenladen in Old Collinsville, and she's going to show us how to make some beautiful as well as extremely fragrant gifts for the holiday season. And thanks so much for having me out to your beautiful home. Oh, welcome. And I'm pleased to have you come. Great. And you have so many wonderful projects for us to mm -hmm. do. What are we going to start with? We're going to start off with doing pomanders. Now, pomanders go back centuries, mm -hmm. and they're a way for people to scent their homes. And I like doing a pomander a little bit differently than most people do, and it makes doing the pomander much easier. Okay. We have a special scoring tool that um, is from France and it takes off just the right amount of the peel. So many of these lemon zesters you get go too deep into the flesh of the fruit. So this okay. one takes off just the right amount of the peel and it makes doing them much easier and you can do wonderful designs. So you don't want to score it if you're not using this tool, you don't want to get down to the meat of the fruit. Right, exactly, because okay. that just makes it rot. Okay. okay. So you want you to take want to off just, just a thin okay. layer of the peel, and then it'll make sticking the clothes in much easier. Okay. And I like to start off with doing a spiral. And you want to do it over a piece of tissue or newspaper, because as you're zesting this, it can come off and spray, and it can sting your eyes, or yeah. if... If, if you're not wearing you, glasses, If you're right? no, not wearing glasses, and it hurts. Yes. And you also want to protect whatever um, table that you're working on. So I'm going to start just by drawing this against the orange, right. and I just keep going around and around and so around. So you're just doing a big circle. I'm doing a big circle, and I try to get it off all in one piece. It always doesn't work that way, but when uh -huh. it does, there's wonderful things that we can do with the peel that comes off okay. after we finish doing the pomander. These remind me a lot of, I went to college in Williamsburg. Yes. And of course, there's mm -hmm. Colonial Williamsburg. Yes. And these remind me so much of the shops in Colonial Williamsburg mm -hmm. and all the decorations they have for the holidays. I've always been inspired by Williamsburg style of Christmas mm -hmm. decorating. I love the use of fruits and natural things and it just makes a wonderful um, holiday decoration without being so seasonal that you couldn't use it all through the winter as right. opposed to poinsettias or something glitzy. Mm -hmm. Fruits are always, you know, wonderful and you can use them any time of year, but for you the holidays... You can start at Thanksgiving, exactly. even before. Yeah. yeah. So whatever decorations you're doing, you can use for Thanksgiving through the holidays, okay. which is great. Um, I like doing a, um, a centerpiece, and it's a, it's a Williamsburg-style centerpiece, but instead of using the um, traditional wooden cone that's studded with um, nails to stick your fruit on. Mm -hmm. We use a wrought iron fruit stacker that we have made by the Pennsylvania Dutch in Pennsylvania. Huh. And it makes doing um, a centerpiece much, much easier and the fruits cure very well on the stacker on because the stacker. you're not actually sticking it onto a nail and having the juice ooze out of it. Right, so it doesn't so, get sticky. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I'm just sticking my cloves in mm -hmm. about a quarter of an inch apart. And you want to do them no matter what type of design you're doing, even if you're studying the whole orange. Mm -hmm. You want to do them about a quarter of an inch apart because as the fruit cures, it shrinks. So if you put them too close, too close together, it can actually pop the cloves out of the orange. Oh. So you want to do it about a quarter of an inch apart. Okay. And when you say curing, you just mean when it dries. When it you dries. You don't have to do anything exactly. other than no, let you're it not, dry. No, you're not curing it at all. It's just the process of drying out. Okay. And it'll shrink about an eighth 
um, of the original size. So it's going to, you know, okay. shrink down a little bit. Now you have quite a bowl of cloves. To do mm -hmm. a lot of these, you need a lot of cloves. Right. We have kits at the shop. Okay. And this kit has a half a pound of cloves. And if you score them, um, this kit will do 12 to 15 oranges. And if you're buying oranges to do this, I like using a sun-kissed orange. I don't know why. I've done thousands of uh -huh. them, but they just cure better and make a nicer presentation. And it's a navel orange. Okay. And this is something kids could do. It's something kids can do. And because our sense of smell is related to our memory more mm -hmm. than anything else, it's a wonderful project to do with little kids. My little nephew started doing these when he was three, and he was happy just to sit with a bowl and stick right. the cloves in when I showed him how far apart you know, to make oh, it. something you can do on Thanksgiving Day while you're right, waiting for the exactly. turkey to cook or while yeah, you're watching it's football. A, it's or... a perfect thing mm -hmm. to do on Thanksgiving Day. And if you score them, it makes doing them much easier for the kids. Okay. It's, it's not tough. So the on scoring your is really the older this, person's job. The scoring the is the, the older clothes. person's job. And you okay. only want to score as many as you're going to do in a sitting. Because if you score them and then wait a couple days, the skin is going to harden. So you want to do oh, it the same day soft. that exactly. You want to do it the same day that you scored it. So, so you have a finished one over there. We here. have a finished one over there. And this is a different design, but very cool. You can do Neat. all different kinds of you know designs with it, okay. and you can just use your imagination. Mm -hmm. I also like taking. Um, a cookie cutter and just oh, pressing, pressing a heart-shaped uh -huh. cookie cutter into the fruit just to make an impression in the skin. So it's not actually scoring it, it's, it's not, just giving it's you not, the pattern. It's just giving me the pattern, whether it be a uh -huh. star or a heart or whatever. Right. And then you go back and you can see where that impression is. You just kind of roll it onto the orange, makes an impression, and then you can score out that design and make That's a heart. very neat. I love that. Yeah, it's You fun. could even do these as jack-o'-lanterns. You could. I've make done. Them. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. little pumpkin faces? Yes. I I've done jack-o'-lanterns. Love that. Yeah. So then, um, what else can you, I see an ornament over here. Right. We're going to do an ornament. Okay. And the way we're going to do. Um, and now these, do we throw these away? No, we don't throw we're those away. We're going to come back to we, these? We keep those. Okay. We we're going to keep, keep these. Put these to the side. Don't Get rid of your peels. There's something right. coming with those. Okay. okay. So okay. if you want to make an ornament for the Christmas mm -hmm. tree, you need some ribbon. And I like a nice satin pico ribbon. You want um, a good quality ribbon. And we're just going to take a hat pin, and we're just going to tack that on the top and wrap it around. So when you go to get the ribbon, does it say satin pico on the Yes, it does. And it comes in okay. lots and lots of different colors. Okay. But you want a fabric ribbon rather than a craft ribbon that's going to, you okay. know, come apart. And then I'm just tacking so that on. So it needs to be sturdy enough. It needs to be sturdy enough that it's going to hold up. Okay. And I'm using this pin just to hold in place the ribbon that I'm placing around here. And then I'm going to come around and make a longer piece. And tack this in place again. And then come up around and make a hanger. Okay. And that's a pretty long Yeah, end. it's a pretty long end. You and shouldn't you be gluing. You should be No, pinning. you want to pin it. Okay. And the reason is you want to pin it at the top of the bottom like this, okay? Right. You want to pin it because as you, um, after you do these, they're going to shrink. Right, because they so, dehydrate. Exactly, okay. so they mm -hmm. dehydrate. So in two weeks' time, you want to be able to remove the pin and tighten the ribbon. So okay, it's a perfect it. time to do it at Thanksgiving. And if you want to put them on your Christmas tree mm -hmm. at Christmas, they should be dried out and much lighter. Okay. Because as they dry and dehydrate, they become really light. So it would be too heavy to hang a pomander like this, freshly done, on a tree. It would weigh the branch right. down. But if you do it at Thanksgiving, then you can okay. go back and put it on your tree because it'll become much lighter. What and would the minimum amount of time, like does it take a couple weeks for it to lighten up? It, you know, it really depends on the weather. If we're okay. having a lot of humid weather, then it's going to take longer. But okay. usually you see them starting to dry in about two weeks. Okay. Three or four weeks they're going to be they're dry. Okay. And then once you get your ribbon in place, then you can go back and you can make your designs and put the little, put the little cloves in.
And we have one done over here, Sarah, if you want to take a look at yeah. that. Beautiful. This, Mix one, a, this one's heavy, so this it's is really fresh. heavy. It's really <laughs> fresh, yeah. Okay. So it makes yes. a wonderful gift. It's a great teacher gift, and it's something yeah. that the kids can make and then present in a little gift bag to their nice. teacher. And it's nice to have something different. Right. And smell good. Mm -hmm. It smells delicious. It really. I know. Really Isn't it wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, and you know, it's 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 wonderful for the kids because they'll come into the store and they'll smell this and. Oh, I remember doing it when I was a kid, and they have wonderful memories That's of doing That's exactly this. what I did. Do you remember? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I met you in your shop, mm -hmm. and I walked up. I was like, oh, I, I remember, remember doing this yes. as a kid. But I think the way of scoring them makes doing them so, so much, much easier, easier, and then mm -hmm. they cure faster. So it's a joy to do rather than a killer for your thumb. Okay. So we have... Um, a fruit stacker, and we are going to make a centerpiece. So this is what you were talking about with the Colonial Williamsburg exactly. versus on spikes. Okay. Exactly. So I like to do it on a cake plate, cake stand, or on a plate because you're going to put water in here. This is a little flower frog. It's a little okay. pin that's weighted, and I'm going to stick that in okay. the bottom, and I'm going to fill this with some water. And you want to do your um, pyramid on a plate or on a cake stand because if you want to move it, mm. you can just pick this whole thing up and move it. And this is a fruit stacker. And these come in two sizes. This is a larger one, and then there's a smaller one that holds 11. Okay. You can make a wonderful centerpiece with the smaller one by raising it up. Okay, um, so it adds some height to it. It adds some height to yeah. it, so it makes a wonderful centerpiece for the table. Okay. But definitely do it on a plate so that you have the option of moving it around. Okay. Now, I have um, a lot of different kinds of greens that I've picked from the backyard this morning that we're going to add. And whatever you have in the backyard works great. Is there anything that isn't good. I mean, obviously, well, you don't want to use yeah. You don't, you don't want to use hemlock because hemlock really drops. Okay. Um, any kind of the um, like the balsam, you know, can also drop. This happens to be an umbrella pine, and that is it's really a beautiful, neat. beautiful, soft, long needle um, pine that really, really holds its needles well. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding the greens. Okay. To my stacker. And you're trying to, you're getting the tips. Of yeah, the you're getting the tips down into, into the, the water. water. Right. Okay. And the, you're doing the greens first. You do the greens okay. first, and then you get it nice and full, mm -hmm. and then you can go back after you've put your pomanders on and add a little bit more if you want more here and there. Okay. And this will last because you have the water. It this last will last, you know, a few weeks, oh, several for, weeks, yes, the sev several weeks. It'll last okay. the season, mm -hmm. depending upon the greenery that you choose. Oh, good tip. So now we're just going to put a few more on the top here, and we're going to start. If you want to help me, oh wow, we can do this together. You are very busy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save the heart for the for the end. So we're just okay. going to. Place our pomanders okay. on each of the little rings. This is lovely. I know what I'm doing. I have one of the shorter stands. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm going to be doing over Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> that makes a wonderful centerpiece. You know, you can mix them with gourds. Um, I use my stacker year-round. I've done little pots of African violets on it. I've done uh, Jack B. Little Pumpkins, I've done gourds, I've done cupcakes, red delicious apples, mm. of course, look great on it. Um, are, we have them all filled, I think. I think so. Okay. And the last one we're going to do is the little heart on the top. And then if you feel, you know, there's right. some empty spots here and there, then you can go can back go and just tuck, tuck more greenery into it. And it just makes a wonderful fragrant centerpiece without That's the mess beautiful. of Isn't that and, it ju and it does look like something you would find in colonial it Lainsburg. does without it the does. mess and it smells it's delicious. it's wonderful it smells really yes. good yes so now you said that um, there's a use for these shall we yes find absolutely. out what the use sure, for that is I'm gonna so now you're going to show us what we can do with 
these guys? The peels. I, you know, mm -hmm. based on this tree, it looks like there are lots of things There's you can do with them. There's lots of things that you can do with them. One okay. of my favorite things is to make a cinnamon stick icicle. Okay. And you want to get either a six, three, six inch cinnamon stick and not too fat because you don't want them overwhelming on a tree. Okay. And I'm going to use a piece of florist tape and florist mm -hmm. tape is a wax impregnated tape that sticks to itself but nothing else. So you don't want to use like an adhesive tape that would actually stick to the cinnamon stick. Okay, so no scotch tape. No scotch no tape. tape. No, no duct tape. <laughs> don't glue it. Don't glue okay. it. All right. All right. And you're just going to tack that on and I'm just going to wrap this around. Okay. And florist tape you can get at a florist. Any, yeah. <laughs> craft store. Yeah, any craft any, store. Any, yeah. yeah, okay pretty common. Very common. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm just going to tack this end. So most of these ingredients, while we're on that topic, you had mentioned you have the kit for the pomanders. Mm -hmm. right. um, you specialize in spices and, I do. and these types of natural mm -hmm. ingredients. Right. And we sell bulk spices, so you mm -hmm. can get half pound bags of cinnamon or you know bunches of cinnamon sticks, all different kinds of herbs mm -hmm. and spices for use for cooking potpourri crafting right. okay. versus going to the grocery store and buying 10 bottles exactly of cinnamon or yeah because that's not very cost effective um cinnamon um and cloves if you get a little jar of cloves they're like nine dollars yeah know, which is very yeah, expensive so we sell in bulk so, so bulk you, is good bulk is good you save a lot <laughs> so i've just tacked the um, okay. orange peel on that and i'm going to let it sit for about two days after two days it will stay right on there and I'm so just the peel has dried the peel is dried okay. and it's dried right on the okay. cinnamon stick okay look at that so if you have a glue gun this is something that I would do with a glue gun but if you don't um, like a, a good quality like a GE silicone or a good okay. quality fabric glue something that's really really thick Okay. And it's going to hold right away. So like Fabri-Tac or right? I like using like Goop or GE silicone because okay. it, it's so thick that whatever you stick is going to stay so on. So this there is right even away. this is even like paste. It, yeah, a little bit it's like the thicker. consistency of paste. It's little, almost yeah. like bathtub caulking actually. Okay. It's yeah, really it's really thick. goopy, so it's okay. going to hold in place. So I'm just going to take a little piece of fur needle and just glue that on. And is this this is. It's not just, real. It, not real. Okay. You don't want to use anything real if you want to keep it because okay. it, it won't last. So I use... The um, orange peel will last. The okay. orange peel mm -hmm. will last forever. And I have a star anise, which is going to be my little star for the okay. top. Okay. And I'm just going to stick that on. And I like using either rose hips or... Uh, this is a Bora berry that we sell by mm. the bag. Now, is that fake or is that no, real? No, it's real. It looks, it doesn't look real. It, no, that's neat. Yeah. What's it called? Bora berry? Bora, B O R A. And Very I cool. add it to um, my potpourri because it just has that wonderful yeah, it's bright a red. color. So we you have all these little. Lovely. Yeah, so you can do yeah. little pine cones on there if you have a hemlock yeah. tree. The little pine cones from right. hemlock trees oh, yeah. work really well. The star anise is great because uh -huh. it you know gives a star. And I've just glued a little ribbon on there. Okay. And we can do the same thing with um, dried apples. Okay. And right. I I like using red delicious apples. Mm -hmm. And if you these cut are very them, red. yes, if you cut them lengthwise this mm -hmm. way. Um, sometimes you end up with little hearts, which is oh, great right. when you they can dry. see where the stem was. Exactly. Goes in. Oh, yeah. that's neat. And so you can keep that through Valentine's Day. You can keep that through <laughs> Valentine's Day. And when you slice your apples, you have to soak them in a solution of um, lemon juice and salt, okay. which prevents them from turning brown. Mm -hmm. Just for a couple of minutes, I just throw them in there, and then I take them out and I pat them dry with a towel. Okay. okay? And I have a um, dehydrator, and mm -hmm. I just put them in, and I dehydrate to them. them. Out. Okay. Right, exactly. But you could do them on a low oven on a cookie sheet also. Okay. But it's important to dip them in the solution so they don't turn so they brown. Don't turn all brown and and okay. I've done the same thing I did with a cinnamon stick. I put a little hanger on here, mm -hmm. a little piece of ribbon, and I've taken a little piece of artificial pine, mm -hmm. um, a little star anise, and a boraberry. Beautiful. Wonderful. Love it. Then, 
when you there's have more. there's more <laughs> Never wait, ending. There's more. There's more. <laughs> Don't you love it when there's I more? I love it when there's more. <laughs> and all of these things you can do with your kids, which you I love. You can do with your kids. Because it's, it's great. just, it's fun and it keeps their little hands busy. It does. And, and they, they never forget it. Yeah, it makes a great yeah. teacher gift. Or so grandparent I, gift. My grandparents, my grandparents, grandparents love getting stuff exactly. from girls, so. um, I just have a jowl and it's okay. like 18 inches long. And with that long peel, we are just going to, again, just tack the peel mm -hmm. on and wrap loosely. Because now, why you, loosely? Because you want to be able, after, after this dries, you want to be able to slide it off. Oh, so, so you, you don't, don't want it to be so tight it so sticks tight that, to exactly. the stick. Okay. Right. So we'll see how far we and get with this piece. And you're doing a pretty tight wrap. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So we got pretty far with that mm -hmm. one. And then you're just going to tack the end. Boy, you really get a lot of use out of those oranges. You do. <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> OK. So right. I let that stay on there okay. probably for another two days. And it'll couple just days. a couple okay. days. So the okay. peel, the roll, is about two days. Yeah, let it dry. Yeah. Okay. Unless it's really, really humid. And then you want to you know, do it. Right. Yeah. This is not something that you want to do in the summer when it's humid. I usually say like the beginning of November is a f perfect time to start doing okay, the commanders and then you're so pretty much guaranteed of success. Mm -hmm. People will say, oh, I did them in July and they rotted. Well, you know, it was so humid that... <laughs> and there are lots of bugs around right, in July, too. Exactly. They love rotting fruit, right? So what I'm doing is I'm snipping this okay. every few inches. Okay. And this will determine the length of my... Okay. I'm going to try this right along with you. Mm -hmm. so. And you just want to gently Oops. kind of. I was a little too rough with my snipping. Twist this so you can feel that it's okay. loose, and then they just slide off. Okay. Not always. Yes. Yeah. No, it did. I was <laughs> nervous. Yeah, I know. I You'll feel I, it. You'll yeah, feel no, it. Have it a little came, bit of give. Gave. And look at that. It's like a little curly cute. I know, isn't that great? So cute. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, okay. It does come, so gentle is the gentle. key. Gentle, you've so got to be gentle. So um, maybe you don't want your four-year-old to no, pull these no. off. It's not something you but want your four-year-old to do. Maybe oh. your ten-year-old can right. do it nice and gently. And I'm just going to take one of these off the tree. Whoops. And I've just oh, glued a tiny, tiny little piece of gold ribbon on the top. So that. all it is is the peel and the ribbon. All the all it is is the yeah, peel and, and the ribbon. And it's very neat. Right. And you have this beautiful. What do you call it? A feather tray. It's a feather tray. It's made out of goose feathers. Oh, it actually is feathers. It actually is a feathers yeah. tray. Yep. Very neat. That's beautiful. And we have yep. all our. Well, it's, we still have one more. I we see do. There. We do. Shall so we uh, clear the decks yeah, and make so room and we'll, uh, see what's coming and. So now we have a, a whole other set of things to do. Um, now, I think I saw this project on your feather tree as well. Mm -hmm, so right. what are we going to be making? We're going to be making cinnamon dough ornaments. Okay. And all you need is cinnamon and applesauce. And that's right. it. And we've made a dough. And I empty a half pound bag of cinnamon into a bowl. A half pound. Half pound bag. Half pound, OK. But we have half pound oh. bags. OK. And they're um, a half pound bag of cinnamon, and these two jars made this whole batch of dough, wow. which is it a must lot. Expand. It grows. I, it, it must. Grows. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, two 15 ounce jars of applesauce and a half, and a half pound, pound of cinnamon. cinnamon. Okay. A pound of cinnamon. Pound of cinnamon. Pound of cinnamon. Pound of cinnamon. And I've okay. taken some cinnamon and I put it in a shaker top just so I can sprinkle some on my board so the dough doesn't sti uh, stick, just the way you would if you were be, be making a bread dough. Okay. okay. Just like you're using it as flour. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And we want this to be um, consistency that it's going to hold together but not be really, really wet. Okay. So you start with your cinnamon. Start you with your cinnamon. Add the applesauce. You slowly add the applesauce because you don't want it to be too wet. Okay. So I wasn't really sure. I haven't made it for a while. So I put the pound of cinnamon mm -hmm. into the bowl, and then I added a half a jar and another half okay. a jar, and ended up using both jars. So you know when it's a consistency. This is 
It's a little, it feels a little bit like Play-Doh. It does. Yeah, it's a little bit like mm -hmm. a Play-Doh, maybe not a little too bit wet. softer. Yeah, right. it's not wet, it's not mm -hmm. sticky. It's squishable. It's squishable. <laughs> and I'm just going to sprinkle some cinnamon on the okay. top and just roll this out. And somewhere between a half inch and a quarter inch is okay. about what we want to do. And you're doing this in batches. I'm doing it in batches. It's just easier. So depending on the size of the cookie cutter, you can do a lot of ornaments. Oh, you can with this. do a ton of mm -hmm. ornaments. This will make a couple hundred ornaments. Wow. Yeah. Depending yeah. on the size of the cookie cutter. Right, exactly. <laughs> How big your ornaments are. Right. Well, for a little tree, we use little cookie cutters. Mm -hmm. If you were going to be using um, this on a larger tree, then you could use a larger. And are they pretty, if you do a big one, is it more breakable than a small one, or are they pretty um, solid? It, 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 it's pretty solid, depending okay. upon, if you do um, a snowflake that has a lot of little projections, that might break, okay, okay after a while. So lots of little detail yeah. might be a danger. Right, exactly. Okay. But the, they're pretty sturdy. They hold okay. up pretty well. So I'm going to hand you this cookie sheet, and okay. you can have the cookie sheet, and we will cut some out. And the nice part about these is you don't have to bake them. You just let them dry on the cookie sheet. So we're putting them on the cookie sheet just to dry, not just to, to put dry. them in the oven. Just to dry, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. It's a great project to do with, with kids. And kids love dough. So. Mm -hmm. And you can re-roll the extra. You can re-roll the extra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just keep going. doesn't going. matter if it's tough. You're not eating it. No. <laughs> Yeah, don't eat it. You wouldn't <laughs> want to eat this. You'd Smells delicious, but it's, don't yeah, eat you'd it. Be, you'd have a shock. Okay. Although I think I yeah, probably should warn the kids about that. Right. Don't nibble the dough. It doesn't right. taste good. And I have, you just want to poke a little hole in here. Okay. You can use, the, actually that probably works pretty well. So you could use a pencil. A pencil. You could, you could use, use a yeah. toothpick for our... Yes, okay. we're just using scissor end. And you want to put a fairly good size hole in it because okay. as these cure, they're going to shrink a little bit. And okay. you don't want to, you know, be forcing a piece of thread through right. there. So, okay. And then we've got our finished, well, not dried yet. But not dried. But here they take a few days one. to dry. So you can see how they... Um, become a little bit lighter in yeah. color once they dry, once the moisture and is out. And they still smell delicious. They still they smell really? delicious. They're wonderful. All of these things smell delicious. It all mm. does. Now, if people want to find out more about doing these projects mm -hmm. or find out about the shop or get right. directions, should they call the store? They can call the store. We're open okay. seven days a week, and there's always somebody there that'd be more than happy to help them with their projects. Okay, and it's right in the center of the Historic, Historic Collinsville. Collinsville. This has been so much fun. I'm so glad you I came. can't wait it's to so go home fun. and work on these things. And um, all of the projects that we've done smell delicious. They're beautiful. They're natural. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been so much fun. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. I'm Sarah Connor. Don't forget to tune in next month for a brand new episode of Life and Style with Sarah. Thanks and happy holidays.